my name is Amy. I'm gonna be the guest chef on Kitchen on Road. I'm gonna be cooking curry chicken today. And I just wanna emphasize the importance that curry chicken has in both West Indian and Indian culture. But the most important thing is having good quality curry powder, which is exactly why I'm using Pili Pili spices because my West Indians know the difference between authentic curry powder and trash curry powder. But Pili Pili, top notch. That's, that's the A1 spice. I wanna give a big shout out to Koti, who is the founder of Kitchen on Road, and London, who is the director of this amazing cooking show. So I have everything in place for my curry chicken, which has already been washed, skinned, and all the fat has been cut off. Please wash your chicken, don't be nasty, vinegar and lemon juice. I have my green onion, I have my white onion, I have my garlic, my ginger, my potatoes, which is in cold water to allow it to oxidize. I have olive oil, pimento seed, garlic powder, and onion powder. Okay, so all the ingredients here, I'm gonna slowly be adding to my cleaned, cut, and diced curry chicken here. So first, I'm gonna be adding my pimento seed. This is a Caribbean staple, so I'm gonna put that in there. Because of COVID, I won't be using my hands, but I have a spoon in here, which works just as well. Just make sure it gets in there with every piece of chicken. The thing with pimento seeds, because they're very strong, you don't need to add too many. Then I'm going to be adding my garlic powder. Then my onion powder. And then I'm gonna be mixing this up a bit. Now I add olive oil to my seasoning because I feel like it helps to be absorbed into the chicken. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm not gonna add too much because we're gonna end up adding a little more once we put it in the Dutch pot. Then we're gonna be adding Pili Pili's black pepper. I like my food spicy, so I have to be really mindful of how I season when I cook for other people because not everyone likes spicy food. So that's all I'm gonna add. So I have my black pepper, my pimento seeds, my onion powder, and my curry powder, no, my garlic powder in there so far. I'm just mixing it around to make sure it all gets in there. I'm gonna be adding thyme, just a little bit. And we really just wait until our ancestors tell us no. <laughs> that's, enough. that's enough seasoning, my child. Okay. So the next, I'm gonna be adding the all-purpose spice from Pili Pili Spices. This also has salt in it. So that's why if you notice, I don't have salt anywhere on here because if there's salt included in the spices, you don't need to add extra because food can get salty real quick. I'm gonna mix that in as well. So, so far I've added all my dry ingredients. I have my all-purpose seasoning. I have my black pepper, my thyme, and I have not added the curry powder yet. I like to add that less because it is the star of the show and you can't be chintzy with the curry powder. So now I'm going to be adding my fresh seasoning, which is my green onions, my, my white onions, and this is my ginger. I'm just gonna turn the tray around and then my garlic. So as you guys can see in there, it's all in now. And then I'm gonna slowly but surely be adding my curry powder, which again, do not be chintzy with your curry powder. This is curry chicken, so if all else fails, your chicken needs to taste like curry. So I'm gonna add some now, and then I'm gonna mix it in. And then I'm gonna add some more in. So your curry should be yellow. Your chicken should be yellow. Enough to stain your fingers, stain your clothes. Like everybody knows, all my West Indians and Indians know when you're cooking curry, your clothes smell like curry, your clothes are stained with curry. That's when you know you put enough. And I like to let my meat marinate. So at least minimum for an hour, maximum, I'd say 24 hours. Um, most people like to marinate it for at least 24 hours, but for the sake of the show, I'll let it marinate for at least an hour. 
So as you guys can see, my white onion is stained yellow. And that's because I've been adding, gradually adding more and more curry chicken. And then I'm just gonna add some more for the end. We're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what your finished product should look like. This is with your dry ingredients and your fresh ingredients added mixed up so it's evenly distributed and every piece is seasoned. Okay, so after it has sat for an hour, right now you guys can see the finished product that's been marinating. So I also added fresh thyme and fresh scotch bonnet pepper from the garden. I prefer to cut my scotch bonnet pepper frozen because that prevents the juices from leaking. And for anyone that's used scotch bonnet pepper, you know that the juices touch any of your skin, you're just, it's burning. So. I've put them all in there. I've let it marinate. After I put the chicken in the bowl, I'm gonna keep the bowl because that's gonna help make the sauce. Afterwards, I'm gonna put water in there and then pour it in after. Okay, so I have the curry in the pan. As you guys can see here, it's important to watch your curry to make sure it doesn't burn. And because Pili Pili Spices is good quality curry, there's more color to it. That's another dead giveaway if your curry's trash. If your chicken doesn't come out yellow, your curry's trash. I'm just gonna put the lid on now and let it sit for a bit. I'm gonna turn it to kind of mid, low, mid, medium heat while I start my rice. Okay, so as I said before, you guys keep the bowl that you did your seasoning in because that helps to create your gravy. So I'm just gonna turn the water on a bit. And then I added some of the water into here. I scraped off all the excess seasoning so that it looks like this. And then I add it into my chicken that's been sitting on the oven. Okay, so I'm just checking my chicken now. Just mixing it a bit. As you can see, the gravy is starting to get a little bit thick. And the pieces are well and marinated. The curry chicken looks well in season, which I need to emphasize again, the importance of using good quality curry powder. If your curry chicken does not have yellow tint to it by the end, you know you didn't use good quality curry powder, but I suggest using curry curry spices. Okay, so now I'm gonna cook rice. I know a lot of people not a lot of people, but some people might think rice is hard to cook. I feel like rice is either really easy or really hard. You can either do it perfect or do it terrible. So this is how I learned to cook my rice. I put a little bit of the Pili Pili sea salt into it. Just a little bit, because you don't want your rice to be salty. Make sure it's on the three hole and not the full hole. And then I take my butter and I put it in there as well. And I also like to put thyme in mine, which is something I learned from my grandma. So I feel like this is also very much an Indian culture thing. So I bring it to a boil. So I have the heat on high. Um, and I know a lot of people say to let your rice sit. I don't let mine sit, I continuously stir it. Um, and then once it gets to a boil, I'll bring it down to medium and it boils for five minutes before I turn it on low for 10 minutes. Okay guys, so I'm just checking my meat right now. I'm letting the water boil because that also allows for the gravy to thicken up a bit. Um, I'm just stirring it to make sure every piece of chicken is evenly cooked because we don't want no salmonella. We don't want no uncooked meat and just make sure that every piece is evenly coated because the flavor needs to touch all of them. Okay, so as you can see here, the rice is starting to boil a bit. The way that I learned how to cook it is once it comes to a boil, you bring it to medium. It's five minutes on boil. And then once 
you hit the five minute mark, you bring it to low heat for 10 minutes. But I need to emphasize that don't bring it down to low heat if there's still a lot of water in the pot. So the way that I do it is for every cup of rice, there's a cup of water. But I know everyone does it differently, but honestly, whichever way works for you. If your rice is not stale, if it's not soggy, then it works. Okay, so as you guys can see here, my water has been brought to a boil. I have my thyme in there, my butter in there, and my salt in there. So I'm going to now bring this down to medium heat, low, medium. So this is medium, and I'm gonna let it boil for five minutes. So at 11.40, we will bring it down to low heat and then let it simmer for 10 minutes. Okay, so I took a bit of teaching from both my West Indian and Indian side, and I put tin foil on the lid, and this is gonna be for when it simmers for 10 minutes, so it's not there quite yet. Um, we have three more minutes left, and then once we bring it down to low medium heat, we're going to put the lid on and let it simmer for 10 minutes with the tin foil on, which allows it to steam some more and it keeps the heat within the rice pot. And that allows for every aspect, every part of the rice to cook evenly. So I'm just gonna put this on the side here. Okay, so as everybody knows, you put potatoes in curry chicken, but it's one of the last things that I add. So I'm just gonna be adding the potatoes in now and then I'm just going to be mixing them in. And that allows for the potatoes not to be too soft, but also to get all the flavor that the curry chicken is getting. Um, it allows it to marinate. And then as I add them in, the pot cools down. So I'm just gonna turn the heat up a little bit, just a little bit, um, because it's a good quality stove. So um, as you guys can see in there, so we have the potatoes, we have the chicken, we have the gravy, and the potatoes are gonna start to absorb some of the gravy and allow that moisture to really just seep into it. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on and allow it to marinate for a bit. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've let my rice sit for five minutes and now there's perfect water level and I'm going to let it simmer for 10 minutes on low heat. So it's gonna be very low because this is a good quality stove. So I'm gonna put it there and I'm just gonna let it simmer for 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, I will not be touching it at all. There you go. With my tin foil that allows the moisture to stay within the pot, which is important for rice because rice can get soggy or dry very easily. Okay, so we're gonna check on our chicken, which is done now. As you guys can see, there's some sauce in there, but the curry chicken, the potatoes, everything's all well and seasoned. If your chicken does not look like this, you didn't use good quality spices, which again, I will recommend Peely Peely Spices because that's that good, good quality curry powder because if you're making curry chicken, it has to be good quality powder. Okay, so now we have the rice, which as you guys remember, I put the tin foil on to let it simmer. But as you guys can see, this is how I like my rice personally. Moist, but not too moist, not dry. And if you were to scrape the bottom of the pot, there's nothing sticking on there. And I think that is a bonus because people love to cook their rice and there's just bare rice sticking on the bottom, but not mine because I know how to cook rice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is the final product. I have my curry potatoes, my rice and my curry chicken. Again, I need to emphasize the importance of having good quality curry spices because as you guys can see, it's yellow. If your chicken does not look like this, and if your potatoes don't look like this, you don't have good spices. So that's why I recommend Philly Philly Spices because it's good quality. Okay, so I have my curry chicken here. And to taste it, I have my Trini princess who knows what curry chicken is supposed to taste like. She's gonna try it for me, Marika. And I also have my Algerian prince, Samir. He's also gonna try it. He's never tried curry chicken before, so this is his first introduction. So I need to set him straight. Bon appetit. So she's gonna be eating the white rice and the potatoes. <laughs> mm, 
I mean, she started, she already said most of them, right? 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go into the chicken. <laughs> Honestly, this is my first time tasting curry in my life. <laughs> so you're enjoying it. <laughs> he went back for the potatoes. Yeah. Had to do a double take. Ten ten. Everything. Wow, good. <laughs> Had to do a double take. Okay, so I want to thank you guys for tuning in to me cooking the curry chicken. But it wouldn't even be right if I don't end it off with the founder, the visionary, the mastermind behind Pili Pili Spices, because this dish wouldn't be possible without him. Koti! Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm sure you guys, uh, you know, uh, the previous guests had a wonderful time at eating the food and tasting the food. I, as a vegetarian, uh, cannot eat this, but I'm sure um, based on their reactions and based on their, their emotions, and they, they enjoyed the food. Um, I myself, I want to thank everybody who, who participated, who took their time out of their day, and Amy today, to be able to come and bless our kitchen today, uh, to be able to cook um, something that's part of her culture. Um, as you know, uh, this is a YouTube channel, so please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the page. I want to thank all the viewers and everybody who ever supported Pili Pili Spices. See you soon. Season 2 coming out soon. Take care. Peace. Good job. He is.